Hey, what's up? So, um, today we're going to look at Elliot Hulse again. Um, I've been wanting to cover him for a while. He's been kind of up to some stuff, so let's get into it. Um, uh, let's see here. Last I checked in on him was like July of August this year. Um, Vox made a video about him, like a short like Snapchat thing. And um, long story short, um, it didn't paint him in a good way. The video itself wasn't terrible, but Elliot kind of freaked out and claimed it was defamation. Um, the title was a bit problematic, so I could see why he freaked out. But then he turned it into this, um, this whole like <laughs> he started like a newsletter off of it and said he was gonna sue Vox or something like that. Or not Vox, it was Vice. He, yeah, he was like, it's a war on Vice. And Vice, he meant like the company and actual like the religious uh, definition of Vice. So Elliot is, um, he kind of changed his channel, not branding, but like the way he looks again. Um, this is like his main picture for everything. He's like in a suit. He calls himself the general now. <laughs> of the was it the strongman militia or some shit like that i don't know but um yeah he's doing doing some new stuff got some new thumbnails they're not horrible they're better than what they were before um yeah his, his um it looks like his stuff got more religious, like he's covering more Catholicism, which I guess I've kind of, the only thing I've really seen of his new stuff is the, the Catholic masculinity show. That was a doozy. Um, yeah, <laughs> the, uh, interesting stuff in that one. Um, I feel like I grew up Catholic, so I know some stuff, but my, uh, my Bible knowledge is very limited nowadays. So when it comes to like pushing back on his like religious beliefs, I don't think I could really do that a whole lot other than just saying like, Hey, don't, don't enforce your beliefs on others. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's, uh, all I can hear for that for right now. Anyway, he released an episode with the Hodge twins and um some quick background on them real quick they've um i used to be big fans of the hodge twins they're really cool they made some funny videos um i think i found them when i was looking, at, looking for like workout advice um like on intermittent fasting i think yeah and um i just like their stuff they gave like a lot of like um they gave advice but they ended up like roasting people I forgot what the name of that segment was, but they had like three channels at the time. Patriot Twins, Hodge Twins. I think it was under Hodge Twins. Oh, no, this is their vlogging channel. Was it Ask Hodge Twins? Yeah, it was this one. They haven't posted on this one in a while. But um, yeah, I, I was a big fan of them. Um, when that apocalypse happened, I um, I paid for their... They had an exclusive, like, the paid-only channel that they did, Hodge Twins TV. Um, I was subscribed for that for a good amount of time and then um youtube um they got rid of their paid channels subscriptions i want to say 2018 end of 2018 that happened and um they moved over to Ven uh vimeo which i think i no i don't think i went to vimeo after that i think i like not that i wasn't i wasn't watching them that much to justify the the switch over to um, to the Vim the Vimeo, yeah, because they were posting their uncensored videos and then their more explicit videos on the Hodge Twins TV, and like I was enjoying it, but I just didn't get that much. I wasn't watching it enough to like justify it. So, so yeah, and then 2019, I kind of stopped watching them, and then um, I don't know. I just kind of I like I I've said this before, but I kind of like cycle the YouTubers I watch, and I don't know. I just kind of like cycled out of them. <laughs> But then I noticed they were posting some more um, like conservative stuff in 2019. In 2020, they went full like mega kind of. And ever since they've been like conservative Republicans. So 
it's been an inch i guess an interesting transition for them but um yeah i've so basically i've been a uh not like a fan i've been a fan of the hodge twins and i've been like a somewhat fan of elliot holes <laughs> um but growing not growing up but watching their videos when they were younger Elliot Hulse was always said to be like the third Hodge twin and um I guess they finally collabed I don't think they've ever collabed before I don't quote me on that I'm not entirely sure on that one but they finally released a video um so Elliot Elliot's views are down by a lot <laughs> um he's lucky to break like 20k um I'm not one to talk because I don't get any views. <laughs> but the Hodge twins, I think, are still yeah, they're breaking in like 100k videos or 100k views. Some are, but it actually looks like their views are kind of hit or miss. Which one's this one? The Hodge twins. Oh, that one was two years ago. Where's Patriot twins or conservative twins? Um. Oh no, they're still getting. Pretty good views so they're popping so but th that's interesting so yeah huh interesting because this video only has 25k views maybe it's i don't know maybe elliot's getting like i don't know maybe people were interested they actually i think they did this a while ago because i remember elliot posted um like an instagram story of this back a couple months ago. It only came out two weeks ago. Okay. So, let's hop. Actually, first, I want to... Because he's doing, like... Okay, let's look at this video first, and then we'll hop into everything else. I think this kind of... I think this video gives, like, a... Like, a picture of where his content is or is going. Welcome to the Elliot Hulse Podcast. Podcast. I am the king of making men strong. Shedding of the old man, right? The way we can freely walk into rising, ascending, cleansing, sanctifying our soul for it's the Yo Elliot God. Show. That's Welcome to the Elliot Hulse Podcast. So, you probably want to know what this is all about. Well, if you remember, I am the king of making men strong. That's right. The guy that brought you, become the strongest version of yourself, and that's what we're doing on this show. So, we're going to be talking about many different things related to being the strongest you. This is some pretty good production quality, I think. <laughs> um, the intro is pretty cool. I'll give him that. Um, I'm liking, I'm liking the, the stuff. I'm liking the, <laughs> I'm like, I'm vehemently against like his, his views, but production quality is not bad. It's pretty good. But mainly in the way of getting rid of the old, weak, effeminate, useless version of yourself. The one that you don't want to be no more. The guy that drags you down and you feels like an anchor that keeps you stuck from ascending into your goals, your most holy self, your strongest self, the strongest you, bro. So we're going to talk about austerities. We're going to talk about challenge. We're going to talk about initiation into manhood through the getting rid of the old and adopting the new. And if there's one thing that you know, if you've been watching this guy for a while, is that I'm always becoming something new. And there's a reason why. And I'm going to talk to you all about that here on the Elliot Hulse podcast so enjoy okay not not terrible pretty i feel like i've seen enough elliot to where like he's just repeating himself at this point <laughs> but um sure let's give that a like why not okay let's watch 
the Hodge Twins. I I don't know where this is going because the Hodge Twins have a very like <laughs> blunt personality, and Elliot's he can be pretty like abrasive and like um extroverted, but lately he's been more like calm and like almost like a monk. So I don't know. I don't know where this is gonna go. We shall see though. I, I think maybe the Hush Twins are pulling back on like their their kind of sense of humor. Like they're like overly sexualized kinda um wittiness, I guess. <laughs> we shall see though. Oh, they did a podcast with the Daily Wire. Oh my god. That's annoying. Okay. Well, I shouldn't be surprised. They fucking go on Steven Crowder all the time. Oh, well. Man, I should fucking definitely go in on the Hodge Twins sometime. We'll see. Welcome to the Elliot Host Podcast. Podcast. Is this like every fucking thing? I feel like he could shorten this. Okay, here we go. With a new show, and I got two of my bros here, you might say. Some people think so anyway. <laughs> they call them the host twins. <laughs> I'm Elliot Hodge. <laughs> right. They all th they, they think we're related, you know? Yeah. Yep. I don't know how many times people came up to us, hey, it's the host twins. I'm like, what? <laughs> Are you offended when you <laughs> That's kind of good. Like, no, I, know, I know exactly what he's talking about. Yeah. 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 So, but, uh, and that used to fill my comments. Man. Okay. I, I like... I I oh, okay, I kind of like that. Okay, let's see let's see where this goes. Oh, their shirt. Why? Oh my god. Why? <laughs> Why? He looked just like Elliot Hosen. Then you go to your comments, man. He looks just like the Hodge twins. Yeah. So I imagine I was like, cause we used to get we're going to grocery store. Hey, man, it's the host twins. I'm like, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> That's my reaction. Yeah. Like, so I was like, I know Elliot's gotta be getting this shit too yeah, all the yeah. time. Yeah. And sometimes I play it off. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, that's right. No, my brother's at home right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what it is though? A lot of people are nervous when they first see you. So yeah. they a lot of people do stupid things when they first meet somebody, especially somebody a big fan of. So people make mistakes all the time. So that's got a lot to do with it too. Yeah. Dad, we look like uh, triplets. Yeah. 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 You know one thing I noticed when I became quote unquote famous? We have a lot of parallels. Mm. One of which is that your ancestors are Scottish. Yeah. yeah. Our Scotland, European, yeah. Wales. Yeah. When I got my DNA check, um, what was it? Ancestry? It was yeah, like ancestry. forty four percent European, Scotland and Irish. Yeah. 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 Uh, do you? Oh man, I forget. It's kind of cool. Uh, I'm looking at their stuff. How can you be free from modern slavery? How often do we find ourselves slave to our minds, jobs, society standards, and so forth? On this episode of Elliot Podcast, the Hodge Twins join Uncle Yo in an elaborate conversation concerning the unsettling status of today's society. The need for guidance and liberation from the moral corruption present is necessary to reach self-betterment. Still, they also dive into their own experiences and decisions they've had to make to set themselves apart from almost sinister aspects of society. We'll see where this goes. Yeah. <laughs> finally, after more than 10 years, we can see Elliot and Hodge twins. It finally happened, guys. Yeah, this is the first time they ever collabed, I think. Yep. What was I looking for again? Oh, yeah. December 5th. I'm pretty sure they made this a while ago, but why are they just uploading it? I guess he was making a backlog of content to upload. I don't know. I get the name of the word, but my grandma, my great aunt was at my house this uh, summer mm -hmm. and she revealed to me the plaid pattern that's associated with the with the uh, Scottish tribe. Oh, okay. That we're in. Mm. Do you got, oh, you you got Scottish that? too, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what it's looking like. Yeah, you know? Scottish, yeah. Scottish people are pretty tough. They're tough yeah, people. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you're a man, you're wearing a skirt. You gotta be tough. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. wore skirts and stuff. Yeah, yeah. We, we went to Ireland and uh, we saw one of those shows out in the streets. Was in Scotland. Yeah, playing with the, the first time they had yeah. the bagpipes and stuff. All of them had big, powerful muscular legs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> big, big dudes, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Vikings. Yeah, yeah. Like Vikings. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one of, have you guys ever seen the documentary uh, Stones of Strength? Mm, no. So it's a, you know it's, it goes around in the fitness industry. It's one of these where the, these guys went through uh, Europe. And he discovered these different cultures that initiated men through the lifting of stones. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it was in Scotland. Mm -hmm. So these guys, like, they recognize their masculinity and their value as men mm -hmm. by, can you pick up this stone, boy? Yeah, right. Pick up this stone, bigger stone, yeah, bigger right. and bigger stone. So they're definitely, right. definitely probably why you see it in all the strongman contests and picking up the big boulders and stuff. Yeah, big guy. Have you heard of the Highland Games? Mm -hmm. It's a, so you wear a skirt. 
okay. wear a kilt. Yeah. And, it's a kilt, um, not a skirt, right? Yeah, it's right. a skirt, it's a kilt. I know. Yeah. I have to acknowledge my own history, right? <laughs> Who the hell knows? Your, I don't know my right. history. Yeah. I don't think most of us know our history. It's, yeah, it's right. fun finding out, though. Yeah. But there's a, a tradition of, of strength competitions mm. with the Scottish. Mm. And they will do things like take a long pole, they call it a caber. Mm. I don't know, 20 feet or whatever, and you hold it like this, mm -hmm. and then you throw it, and it tosses end over end. Have you guys seen that? Mm -mm. No. Uh, I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that. Throwing probably big rocks. Probably because I got a bad back. <laughs> <laughs> I stay away from stuff like that. But no. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Scotland. I mean, um, what part was, <laughs> was we at? <laughs> this is slightly awkward. <laughs> we went to, um, it was the capital. I forget it. I yeah, can't even remember. Capital. But we was, that, we was actually doing some shows out there. And in Scotland, you know what I found? The people there, their accents are so thick. Yeah. Oh, man. They be talking English, but they're so thick, it sounds like they're talking a whole other language. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and so your grandfather spoke like that? Uh, he was my, what was it? Great, great, great grandfather. He was from Ireland. Yeah. His name is Donald Cheatham. <laughs> was it, Do what was it? It was Don Donald Cheatham. Yeah, Donald Cheatham. Yeah. Mm -hmm. His name was Don. They actually wrote a, uh, a book about a family called the Hurstons. We come from the biggest plantation from Slave Virginia, plantation. And, and he's in the book. And uh, he was from Ireland. And um, he had a white family and a black family. Yeah. Hey, that's all right. And yeah. dude had, <laughs> had two chicks. Had a black chick and a white chick. Really? Yeah. What's crazy about him back in those days, you know, the whites e. who had black kids, they never associated themselves with their kids. Uh, and in that book, in town, he's out in town, spending time with his black boys, drinking with them. And, yeah. He was different. Yeah. He was totally different, yeah. He was there for them. Mm -hmm. My great-grandfather... Wait, what was the name of the book? Hold up. We come from the biggest plantation from Slave Virginia, plantation. And he's in the book. Virginia, yeah. I I remember seeing a Kraut video, and he was saying, like, a lot of um, the Scottish came to Virginia, and they went past the, the mountains over there. And they kind of like settled out there. So that kind of makes sense. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. That was just a point I want to make. My great grandfather, he was English. Because mm -hmm. just like you guys, I did the test too. Mm -hmm. My brother did the test. Mm -hmm. They gave me back the results. He was English. His name was John Hulse. And he came to Belize. Mm -hmm. And he liked the black puss. Yeah. Like right. You guys were saying. Right. Yeah. Oh my he, God. He, he, mm. Why? <laughs> I don't remember. I don't know her name, but she was a tall African woman mm -hmm. uh, that he hooked up with. Mm -hmm. But he was uh, like a, he was a G. They say he would ride his horse everywhere he goes, mm -hmm. bareback, and he would, he would go into the store. Oh yeah, with his with his horse, just a big arrogant man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know? And then so what's the what's the African half? Do you know? Uh, twenty four percent was like Nigerian. Yeah. Um, I forget the other. Uh, but it came Tobago, out to um, yeah. like islands, Ghana, um, yeah. Ghana. Um, mm -hmm. well, you guys are more mixed up than me. Yeah. Yeah. So I had 40 percent. It was um, Ghana from Ghana. Yeah. But right. go look at pictures of Ghana. What they look like. Yeah. Short, yeah. thick people. No, nah, green, light. Really? Yeah. But there's some. Yeah. The a lot of lot, you will see a, a broad mix of, of like, you know, uh, people's colors. You see people like you. Then you see somebody very, very dark. You know? Yeah. But you probably you look, probably look. That way because he's got Scottish. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Let's look at where Ghana is real quick. West Africa. Oh, it's right next to Sierra Leone. Or is that Sierra Leone? I'm pretty sure this section was like colonized by the British, right? Ghana. Yeah, British colony. So that makes sense. Gold Coast Colony. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. 1874 and British rule spread through the region in the country. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking that's the people in Ghana. That's what happened to them, too. Mm -hmm. Unless there was a mutation or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's yeah. Scott. Race mixing. Yeah. yeah. What do you think about race mixing? You guys I, have I, Mexican I, wives. I, I like oh, that's. Uh, we're going to get right into it. <laughs> I like race mixing. I like if it wasn't for race mixing, I wouldn't be here. So yeah, yeah. I'm happy to say about race mixing. You wouldn't be so good looking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd be I'd a plain old African. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a plain old African. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got, yeah, man. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm happy about my um my ancestry, you know, my, from Ireland. And, you yeah, know, I'm glad I'm mixed. Yeah. I'm glad I'm not just one thing because when you're more or less when you're one thing, you see life as one thing. Right. I'm yeah. glad I'm totally mixed now. I'm able to be objective when I look at race. That's my genetic makeup. I'm not just solely African American, so I, that that could be a detriment to anybody because, especially in the black community, they only see things from a black man. They don't see things from the world. You know, they put themselves in a. Box. Well, okay, just to push back on that. Um, if you're like 
just like the history of America. Like if you were like any percent black, then you were just considered African American. Like you were just considered black. So, um, that I guess that's where like the monolith mindset that he's talking is coming from. But like, that's that's just the history of the country. <laughs> so, boxing that hurts a lot of blacks. Yeah, fortunately, you know, I have ancestry. You know, growing up, I wasn't. People have always seen us as not as like black. Shit, people think we Mexican when they look at us or Puerto Rican. They oh, yeah. see a black man. Yeah. And I'm sure you went through the exact same thing. Yeah, so, yeah. Speak so, Spanish to me. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, people yeah. talking Spanish to you. So yeah. I think that, you know, that's same. <laughs> it's a privilege I have that, that both of us have that, you know, I'm not just black. I'm, I'm more than just a black African. I'm, I, we Irish. see lives. We yeah. see life as just human. I mean, just to say there's no, that's simply saying I see no color, which of, of course there's color but like you don't have to make a big deal out of it like, i don't know um i think fd signifier kind of talked about like the the different aspects of blackness like from like a light skin perspective to like dark skin but i don't think i've seen i haven't seen all of his videos enough to like comment <laughs> but there is um something there. So the way you should see it. Not right. as black, as white, yeah. as mixed. We see it more as a human. We see everybody for what they are. Yeah. You know, I don't look at things from a black perspective. I look at it from yeah. a human perspective. I used right. to hate when people say I was an urban comedian or a black comedian. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm just like I'm not just a black person. I'm just I'm I'm a comedian. I'm not just a black comedian. Yeah. Why Well yeah. I can see that. Like why you gotta bring their race up before? Why people like to put it themselves in a box like that? I don't yeah, know, where's right? the white? Hey, I'm a white comedian. <laughs> and Seinfeld right. ever labeled themselves as a white comedian? Yeah, I mean, right. only the black population do that. Yeah. I remember when I was just getting started on YouTube and my channel was starting to blow up. They mm -hmm. wanted me to do uh, YouTube black celebrity something. They got us too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, yeah. and, I and that was it. I went to it. We went to it twice, dude. We went to it twice, and the second time I was like, you know what? This is some bullshit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's good. I'm happy that we're all happy to be black and this and that, but this is so lame. This is this is no different from what the white people used to do in the white supremacy. White people, let's think white. That's all they talk is black. I was like, this is so not me. Right. Yeah. Obsessed and, with it. Yeah, and then yeah. when we came out as conservative, they don't advise anymore. I wasn't going back anyway because it was the lamest shit ever yeah. to yeah. us. We was like, yeah. this is so lame. And But they... When yeah, we came out as conservatives, they stopped inviting us. I wouldn't have went anyway, to be honest with you. Yeah. It was just the lamest shit. It was just odd. Yeah. People celebrating just being black. I mean, I'm, don't get me wrong, I'm proud to, of my ancestry, but come on, I'm just a human being. Right. You know, American. Yeah. yeah, I'm American, yeah. yeah. That's another thing. I don't see why people call themselves African American. I've never even been to Africa. Right. <laughs> and why would I have an allegiance to a country that sold my ancestors to white people? Right. It's a continent. <laughs> um, I forgot what event they were talking about. What was the name of the event? So, like an African American content creator thing? That sounds like some 2014, 2015 shit, honestly, Loki. <laughs> like, do you 2016. Know you that name no. African American? It was Democrat politicians right. yeah. to label you, to label you, so yeah. you think, see life a certain way, vote a certain way. That yeah. was the whole point in that. Yeah. Well, they also called. They had different names for races, dude. So. If right. anybody's a sellout, it will be Africans, uh, African Americans, because they already sold you once. You're just gonna <laughs> keep going back to them so they yeah. can sell you over and over and over again. And another thing, I don't stand about fucking black, That's, uh... black people, man. You know, is anybody should be re uh, conservative, Republican, anybody should be far right, knowing this country's history, right. should be black people. Yeah. But I don't get it. Black people are pro government. They keep voting Democrat. They hate the police, but they keep voting for Democrat. But they, they hate police, but they hate the Second Amendment. It's like, I, I don't like necessarily like the police, but I respect what they do. I mean, they have a hard job. And a lot of black people nowadays, they, they want the government to take care of them. I don't want the government nowhere near my family. When I need help, I don't call the cops. I go to my damn dress and I pull my gun out. Right. But like you're a millionaire, so <laughs> most African Americans aren't. <laughs> like what? Um, there are a lot out there. Um, I don't know. I'd have to look into the stats. But. Black people, all black people, should have that mentality. They should be far right Republicans. Mm -hmm. I don't get why these. These people run to the polls every year, the ninety percent clip, and vote for the people who enslaved them, who who uh, put Jim Crow on them. And it's like, bro, it's been over with. Them who had the KKK house, but they just don't understand their history. Yeah. How do you think? 
Well, obviously you don't understand because a lot of those people turned to Republicans after in the fucking sixties and seventies. I think that happened. Well, it did uh, happen by accident. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think. It um, by accident. I mean, there's like no other race of people that's been uh, marginalized as much as black people. I mean, Jewish people, I would say, are close second, or they tied, whatever. But when you turn on the TV, when it's coming from uh, whether you hear. What about the Native Americans? Politician, your music, your culture, your TV shows, your church—they all preach we're Democrats. It's yeah. like, I mean, it's no different from us. We ain't like, black. Yeah, for black people, yeah. It's in everything. I music everything. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a reason why Snoop Dogg and D.L. Hughley and famous black actors are posting on their Instagram they're with coons. Yeah, there's a reason for that. Because are they? I don't know about that one. They can't have black people thinking like we think. That's why yeah. they posted us. And they got shows. They got podcasts. They're on TV. They have a brand. But it's not really their brand. It's the brand that white liberals give them. Yeah. I have my own brand. I don't answer anybody. Yeah, I don't answer the Democrats yeah. or anybody. It's just like, it would be. Mm. You guys had your own brand. And then you went full mega. And now you just like simp for a bunch of rich people. Black celebrities because you're selling them out to the people that have you know, historically just put pe- black people down. Republicans were the party against slavery, you know? Yeah. Bro, that was a hundred years ago and the parties have changed. It's just, it is what it is. Yeah, but what it is, um, I'm not, I'm not a, 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 a fan of both either party. I just Republican cause I enjoy my freedoms in this country. Yeah. I don't have allegiance to anybody. If the, uh, if the no allegiance to Trump, though, I've seen your tweets. Republicans stop doing what they're doing. I'm not gonna have allegiance to them. Democrats can say whatever they want, and blacks will always have always have an allegiance to them. Why? I don't know. Yeah, they got women. I mean, they got dudes competing against. <laughs> they got men competing against. Women. That is crazy. Yeah. So how did that happen? How did black the um the trans stuff? I'm not gonna 100 percent go into because I don't know a lot, but I know they do have some. Some spicy takes on trans people. Yeah. People in America get lumped in with LGBTism. It is says it's that movie. Because they're both minorities that was marginalized. I mean, I understand what it, uh, gay people, they've been marginalized because of, you know, how they dr- act, how they dress. Yeah. I get that. You know what? Anything, anybody has been marginalized, they can be easily manipulated. Yeah. It's right. so easy to manipulate. Yeah, you can export the hell out of them. Yeah, because of the... That's the reason why Joe Biden said, if you don't vote for me, you're not black. Right. I mean, it's it's just the way it is. That's the yeah. way life is. Yeah. And, black, you're and, and touch on what Keep was saying, I don't have, have an allegiance either. The only reason why I'm Republican, the only reason why I'm... Yeah, I mean, like, that was pretty, that was pretty fucked up. I guess. <laughs> Republican? It's because I want the government to stay out of my life. Right. I don't want nothing to do with them. I don't want you to have nothing to do with my team. That's essentially what their beliefs are. They think they're pretty much against all taxes whatsoever. And yeah, they just don't want the government in their lives, which. Hey, man, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to say. Like, you kind of need to pay taxes for for the state to function. So like what? kids school or anything like that i just want to be left alone i mean look what happened during the pandemic you gotta wear a mask you gotta get vaccinated to go out and eat yeah. to keep your job at first both parties was in, uh was in on yeah. it but then over time the republicans okay this is too much this yeah. is just political theater we have so much more um you know evident you know you know we know now what COVID is about right then you start to see what florida what DeSantis did you right. start to see what texas did yeah but who kept pushing all the mandates all the masks all the the they vaccinations to get your job or keep your job. Yeah. And now look what the CDC did. They threw all of that. You don't have to do any of that now. Right. But look at all the nurses they fired who were. Well, yeah, like, because the pandemic was clearing up. It was essentially over, but COVID's coming back with, like, spiking up now. So, like, I think there was a debate on whether masks should come back, but. <laughs> I mean, after two years, man, it was, good. it was bound to end sometimes. So, like, what do you. I don't know, man. On the front lines when the uh, code first broke, they didn't have no vaccine, but they went out there and helped people anyway. But then at the end, they fired them if they didn't get the vaccine. Right. Who, so was, pushing, who was pushing all that? Liberals. Liberals. Democrats. They're pro government. That's why I'm a Republican. Yeah. I don't believe in any of this. I've been watching it. Are you familiar with libertarianism? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah libertarian. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts about that? That's a Republican that doesn't have the balls to say they're Republican. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, but libertarian and Republicans are pretty much one and the same. Yeah. I got, hey, if I was, I liber- got to an argument. if I'm living right beside two libertarians, I'm happy. I just don't want a progressive libertarian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those people are batshit crazy. Yeah. They are just, they are crazy. Yeah. When- have they talked? I've heard them say that a bunch of times, but have they even talked to any like liberals or Democrats or even just like progressives? in the last like two years other than like twitter have they besides like rowdy fans at their comedy clubs who try to like disrupt them 
Have they gone on any podcasts? I th- I've looked. I haven't seen anything. Maybe I missed it, but. Mm, mm. When did you guys make the shift? Like, I don't know about you. I, I've mm-hmm. heard some of your videos where you say you were liberal when you were younger. It's almost like we have to be. When I was younger, I was liberal also, too. Mm-hmm. But there was a clear shift in my mind at a certain point. Mm-hmm. When was it for you guys? Obama's second term. I didn't vote for him. Yeah. yeah. Uh, President Barack Obama is a major reason why I'm conservative. COVID should be an open experience for everyone yeah. because they label people essential and non-essential. Right. You could even go to work, yeah. but the big companies like Walmart, Target, the top 1%, the top 1%, yeah. they can have their stores open. How about the average person with that business? You can't open. Right. Who pushed all of that? It's Democrats. Yeah. Right. They for the top 1%. They are, they are for the elites. They're not for the little man. Right. They say they are. Wait, Trump was in office at that time. What? <laughs> Right. They're not. Not when COVID broke out. How can you label people uh, that that's not rich less than? Yeah. You know. Right. It's, it's not even that. It was more that <laughs> it was a pandemic, bro, and everyone was gonna get sick. <laughs> oh. Like, mm-hmm. are you carrying a smartphone in your pocket? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll be tracked and listened to. It's not even like a conspiracy theory. You know what's yeah. weird? When I get in my car after filming videos, it's telling me how much time I got before I get home. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I was like, what the fuck no, is where you going? <laughs> <laughs> I was what, like, what was it about? You know what's crazy? I don't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. But I'll be talking about something. We'll be talking about a new movie. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? As soon as I go to Google, I get an ad for that. Yep. I was like, is this phone listening to me? Yes. Yeah. That shit is weird. It's been like three years since that's been happening, bro. <laughs> like, what? Um... I don't, it, it is like it's just something that's like a part of our lives now and you can't really like I don't know what to do like <laughs> yeah you're being tracked you're being you're being listened to it's it's been like that for like the past 20 years ever since the Patriot Act and it's just gotten more advanced because of Apple and smartphones and it's so that like so it's a part of daily life as an American, just as any citizen of any country, essentially. But, um, yeah, not like a, it's been going on for a while, man. <laughs> like, why are you barely noticing? And even in saying that, that's like problematic because, like, in a way, like, we've agreed to to live like comfortable life. It's it's a weird topic and. I don't know the best answer for that. So all I can say is, hey, I have a smartphone and you kind of need one to do things, to live like a easier life, to make things simple. I guess you could say like you traded pleasure for security, but even that's like, we didn't really have a say in that. So I don't know. I'll be talking about a topic, and then I get an ad on it. Yeah. Oh, I need some new boots. I go, bam, there's a boot ad. I got to admit, I kind of like that. Yeah. A part of that... I, I part think... of that I like, but a part of it's like, man... <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> if, creepy. If this falls into the wrong hands, I'm screwed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Because yeah. yeah. everything the government touches, they just turn it to shit. Just like the whole thing that's in the news about the um, college loans. Yeah. Right. The Biden wants to um, give people 10000 People don't realize how uh, that all started. The government came in and said, look, everybody should be able to go to school. So we're going to make it college loans accessible for everyone regardless of your credit yeah. the government's gonna come in and uh, guarantee these loans so everybody can go to school so the poor black person can go to school right yeah. so the poor um latino can go to school which was great right but what did the college and universities do once they did that they jacked the rates up right yeah. that's why college is so expensive now right. because anybody can go if they just go out and get a loan right now the government the government screwed all that up so now the government oh man this is horrible all these college loans you know what we're gonna be the good guys we're gonna pay ten thousand of it off hmm Okay, so I see what he's saying, but like what what party was in charge of that? And ever since the eighties, which I'm assuming is when around this happened, like neoliberalism kinda like took over the like took over the world essentially. So y- yes. <sighs> I I see what he's saying, but it's like, dude, okay. I don't know. Do you just not support like any help for people or what? When they created the problem, yeah. Right? 
The left doesn't see that. Yeah. They don't because Democrats prey on people's ignorance for votes. They don't understand that. The government screwed all this up to begin with. I think DeSantis said his best. Why, why is the truck driver who never went to college paying for some idiot's gender studies degree in California? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. It totally doesn't make any sense. It should be Not everyone has a gender studies degree, though. That's the thing. What do you think of a society that treats their warriors so poorly? Right? Like, these are the men that are protecting your country. The fucking society, bro. Country, but yet you treat them like trash. Think of you know some traditional societies where the men of mm-hmm. war were the men that right. were held in high regard. Right. right. They got right. the best of everything. No, they didn't. Just fucking the generals did. Yeah, right. right. Think about if you were like a Roman legionnaire or mm-hmm. something. Mm-hmm. That's how they treat up. Yeah, if you were a fucking grunt, you get fucking capped. That's how they've been treating up police officers. That's how they treat the military, especially when you, if you can, uh, if you're a veteran, a lot of veterans can speak to what I'm saying. When you go to VA, they treat you like trash. And look how they treat police officers nowadays. I mean, there's some bad apples. There's bad apples in any profession. Yeah. Hell, you can pick up a bad prostitute. Everything's got bad in it. When they say that about reporters, though, no. But right. They think everything's supposed to be perfect. Like, cops ought to be perfect when they're not perfect. When they're falling from less than being perfect. Yeah. It's funny. Like, if you, like, one black person do something bad, it's horrible to say all black people like that. Right. But they, they place that on cops. They place that on politicians like they're all bad just one person does something bad they're all bad yeah they generalize everything but when it comes to them they can do no wrong but aren't you generalizing the government and stuff that they do you know right. they don't like to generalize stuff when it comes to them yeah but um and the majority of these people are, are not conservative or republican it's people that like to victimize themselves yeah i never right. be a victim and if i am a victim i'm not going to make an excuse i'm going to do something about it you are know? you guys familiar with here's the thing i <laughs> They're very successful, and I'm very happy for them. I'm pretty sure they're set for life if they didn't, like, squander it or anything. But that's good for them. But a lot of people didn't have their opportunities and didn't have, like, what they had. They had... They're, they're both brothers, so they both, like, kind of pushed each other into their careers. I think they were, like, super close. They both were Marines, and they, they both essentially had the same jobs at the same time. So they're a unit, and a lot of people don't have that, so... White supremacy in a way does still exist today, but not in the way people think it does. Right. You know, and the Democrat black voter don't see that. Yeah. Like, I, I think what's the percentage of black men that that's in a family with their kids? It's like a it's like a joke now. Right. Where's my father? And everybody laughs. at That was because of the drug war. And after slavery, like they were in dust. A lot of former slaves are in like bad conditions and their families grew up in those same conditions the government didn't really do much to help them that's a very generalized <laughs> african-american history but um yeah essentially um i do more research on that so and the white people look, yeah. laugh at it because black men do not stay around for their kids at all yeah and it's like was this by chance or was this by design yeah and it seems like it was to me yeah, yeah prior to the mm-hmm. 1950s the black family was very conservative very yeah, very republican yeah yeah christian mm-hmm. stayed together dr most stayed together with the kids yeah i think that's a thomas Sowell point like yeah. it's like everything started turning when they assassinated him you guys have children mm-hmm. i got three kids i got four okay one's, well, one's all grown up she's uh Forget, man, she's, I hate to think how old she is now because, man, it just it makes me feel real old. Because <laughs> we're going to be 48. Okay. This Damn. Uh, September, so it's just flying. How old are your children? Uh, my daughter, she just turned 15. My son, he's 11. And then my old my older um son, he's uh, 19. And then my, my daughter, she's uh, t- 25. Fuck. She's 25? Yeah. Did you, uh, did she go to college? <laughs> Yeah, uh, she's going to college. Um, I haven't been much in her life until recently, but uh, I understand she lives in... She li- I lives think this is Kevin. This is Keith. I think so. And he, oh, she moved back to California, but she's mad liberal. Where's this Keith? No, Kevin Keith. God, it's been a while since I watched him. I <laughs> can't tell him apart anymore. Yeah, Bernie Sanders. Oh, right. right. Because she's young, she doesn't understand. Right, twenty five. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah she under, she doesn't understand. So, yeah. How old are your children? Um, my oldest is my daughter Dana. She's twenty two. Then I have Joshua. He's fifteen. And then uh, my youngest, uh, Jacob. He's eleven. Bro, that's funny. They their kids are the exact same age. These guys literally did everything together. It's so funny. <laughs> I have a uh, some of my best friends are twins too. So just. <laughs> They also have similar experiences. It's just funny. Twins are a fucking riot, dude. How are you guys raising your, your children to uh, uphold the values that you guys are, are living by? One word. Just don't make yourself a victim. 
these cops, they're in a life or death struggle. Mm -hmm. They're gonna make, you know, quick decisions. Some, some, it's gonna, they're gonna regret some. They're gonna feel that was, you know, necessary. I just, I just tell my kids, it's like, look, if you don't break the law and you follow cops' orders, so you'll never be shot and killed. If the cops wrong, disobey his orders. You'll see him in court. I mean, that's true, but it's also like, there's so many structures there, like, or structures that could be there to make things better, but no. There's just, there, there's so many things that could be in place to make criminal like justice reform like way better, but no. So you can't settle these things out in the street. You can't settle them with your hands or fists. You have to be civilized. Yeah. And just wait your turn in court. Yeah. I never. It's always been common sense to me. If I'm like engaged with a cop and he's or putting me in handcuffs, I've never thought to like punch him in the face and try right. to take his gun. Yeah. It's just, that's just so stupid to me. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's an entitlement <laughs> attitude. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it is yeah well, I mean, that's pretty crazy. <laughs> like, if you try to fight the cop, like, hey, man. <laughs> but if, like, I, it depends on the situation, you know? Like, what if he's, like, not... that? That's a very rare situation, I guess, but I don't know. Yeah, whatever. Oh, why are you entitled to punch a cop in the face? Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. And what, you wouldn't go up and punch a stranger on the street with a gun on his head, but why would you do it to a cop? Yeah. It's like where were your listen. parents? Like, where did they learn that? Yeah. To me, I can't help but think that, you know. A lot of these people don't even have a dad. They have That's a mom. That's why I was going with it. It's mama's mind. And a lot of times, and, and regardless of their ethnicity, ethnicity. I'm just kind of ignoring the <laughs> Elliot's, like, effeminate talking points. It's annoying. The of the family, whether they're black or white, sure. a lot of these women that are growing up, the single parents, they're angry, they're bitter. Mm -hmm. And their kids, when they're, when they're raising their kids, they, they, it rubs off on their kids. Yeah. So when their kids get out, they come out bitter, angry, upset, malcontent. And, and acting like a... Uh, acting like a woman. Right. Acting like a pissed off woman. Yeah. Yeah, so it's definitely a Christian band. Yeah, yeah, but I try, man. With with the um uh, Nation of Islam, they cover up the women, so right. you don't. Which is crazy to me. Which That's is crazy. impressive to me. Yeah, like it's well, the I think it also right. I think you also taking away my right. It's like, oh man, I can't even see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but I, I um. You say that's impressive, that, or yeah, like it's well, the woman's fault. I think it fault. also right. The women. So right. you don't, which is crazy to me, which That's is crazy. oppressive to me. Yeah, like it's well, the I think also, right. Oppressive, there we go. I think you also take it away my right. It's like, oh, man, I can't even see it. <laughs> <laughs> and Elliot says that takes responsibility for what? <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. But I, I, um, when I look at that, man, when I see women dressed that way, I was like, I mean, I understand that they're, that's their religion, but I was like, how can you uh, cover yourself up like you're less than and a man can wear whatever they want? And it's your fault that a man is turned on to you. That's the whole purpose of them covering themselves up, you know? So um, my question then is, if we're conservative, then what are we actually conserving? If the restoration of the West is a goal, or, you know, or conserving it at least, whatever mm -hmm. the hell is left. Um, what do you mean by that, though? Because I take, um, fuck, what's his name? Oh, like Stephen Coffin, Kafkin. He wrote the books on Stalin. I take his kind of definition. The West is institutions and our institutions are still very strong. They're especially like since Ukraine, um, the war in Ukraine, they've strengthened. But if you're talking about like a global thing, the West is still pretty strong. We're talking about even in the U.S. or they're they're, they're kind of like they're not as strong, but they're still holding the country together. So what do you mean? Uh, my opinion is that we have to go back to those philosophies that and traditions yeah. mm -hmm. that built Western civilization. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's been bastardized to such a degree that it's the funniest thing when mm -hmm. white people hate white people. White people hate. Being European, or they hate being American, they hate so, and it's so dumb, right? Yeah, Not so realizing dumb. the beauty of the philosophy mm -hmm. and the foundation that mm -hmm. made Western civilization. But it's also like the country's been done a lot of bad things, especially in the last like, especially in the last twenty years since nine eleven. So makes sense why um, the U.S. is an empire, <laughs> essentially. So. So damn amazing. Yeah, it resulted yeah. in the first country in the, uh, in the world, the best country in the world. Yeah. Where would this world be without America? Yeah. Germany would be in power, more than likely. Yeah. You know you what I mean? So? Yeah, definitely. If the USA doesn't get in that, in that uh, world war, I think Germany wins the war. Yeah. 
And if Germany won the war, what would we have? We'll be talking German right now. Yeah, yeah. we'll be serving hot plates to white people. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's a very. I know a lot of people say that, but what were Hitler's plans for America? I don't know. There's, there's two sides of the U.S. There's the free, equal, democratic side, and then there's also the oppressive, um, empire, empire building capitalist hyper capitalist side um i think the balance is trying to find or the struggle of, of the u.s is trying to figure out which side it wants to be and it could be very great and very like free but also it's very like i said we're an empire so <laughs> empires are gonna do what empires do so and by, I feel like by inherently being an empire, you're somewhat oppressive. He was serving hot plates and sandwiches. He dressed up like butlers and shit, looking at all the white women like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> you stupid. No, but um, it's just, it's just um, that all comes from progressives. You right. should hate um, Western civilization. And it's everything that's going wrong in this world. I don't hate it. Like, I like Europe, but it's a little racist. <laughs> Maybe you really go boil it down. Um, I don't know, man. Like, oh, whatever. Well, it's <laughs> it's backwards. Yeah. It's all coming from the left. Right. Every last bit of it. Yeah. Which is weird. I mean, Republicans, we're not perfect, but shit, we're but not that we're shit not. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're just conservative. We just what works, and we stick with it. They trying to like reinvent the wheel, yeah. and they're you can't reinvent the wheel. You know what I mean? That's another thing. I read this book by Mark Levin, and he said this is why they want to. Uh, throw out the student loans and everybody can go for free because these universities are far left. All the teachers are far left. They want everybody to go to school so they can indoctrinate them with this bullshit so they'll vote Democrat. Not even that true. That's, that's not really even that. That's why they want everybody to go to school. I mean, yeah, colleges are very liberal and progressive, but like, not not everyone. Free. That's why they got that border open. Right. They want to change the demographic of America. Just like with the abortion protests. You see right. how crazy those people got. Yeah. Like, put blood all over them between their legs. And, yeah. and it's like, yeah. it's like they don't realize not only are you killing a kid, you're killing your own flesh and blood. Yeah. And but, but see, yeah. they've been, the reason why they think the way they think is because Democrats tell them this is a right. Right. This is your body. It is their body. And is that right? But they don't understand there's two bodies involved at this point. You know? Well, not yet. It's... They're, they're, and they're, trying to push, they're trying to push this. They want to end abortion because they want more white babies born in America. And, and that's BS. That's not a bad problem. <laughs> Wait, what? You know, yeah. it's... They're, 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 trying to push, they're trying to push this. They want to end abortion because they want more white babies born in America. Oh, the eugenics thing. Oh, oh my God. Again, I gotta look into it more, but that's not what abortion—that's not what abortion is now. Yeah, and that's BS. But that's not a bad problem. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> right? yeah, but, why is that a problem? <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Yeah, but it's like. <sighs> oh my god. Um, the reason why they say that because they want—they think they want to bring white supremacy back. They want the white population to grow. They don't want. But to that's it. the thing. If they if they really wanted that, they would have just banned abortions for black people. You know what I'm saying? Right. And who's they would have just said only black people can get abortions. But who's getting most of their abortions? Right. Yeah. Minorities, black people. Yeah. Up in New York, they get more abortions than black kids are being born. Yeah. So it's just a dumb argument that they make. Yeah. They don't understand. Yeah. But, you know, abortion, that shouldn't be politicized. Like, uh, abortion, uh, global warming, that should not be a... Um, that shouldn't be politicized. Global warming. Uh, we shouldn't even be talking about it. We should be doing what's morally best for the world and for, for women. Uh, that's a big-time business behind abortion. So those body parts are like it's going in the trash. Yeah. Huh. There's pharmaceutical companies buying that and research. And, I mean, they're taking the melanin from the black kids and selling it so white people can have tans. Wait, what? I mean, people just... Yeah, so they were big business. There's universities will pay hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars for a fetus just so they can study. Yeah. It's big business. Yeah. It was... A I mean, it's not wrong. I know that you pull like a lot of like stem cell research from like babies and stuff, but that kind of dips into like Alex Jones, they're feeding on babies type thing. So I just, uh, you got to research. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the time when there was a conflict between the church and, and science, obviously, mm -hmm. where they wouldn't even allow you to open up a cadaver, you know, a dead, an adult. Mm -hmm. But now, it's mm -hmm. a baby. Yeah, they don't yeah. care. It's like, 
Yeah. I can understand a person dying from natural causes, but right. they're taking a aborted fetus and studying it, it's like yeah. it's taking um, yeah. the stem cells and all that stuff and selling it. And yeah, because that wasn't that baby's choice. It's like, you know, when you die, you can put it down and say, I want my body donated to science. Yeah. Right. You know, that child, that, that unborn child doesn't have that right, you know? Doesn't have, didn't have that choice, I mean. Didn't have that choice. I mean, I can understand you taking a cadaver or a dead body if a person shows, hey, if I die, donate my organs or donate my body to science. Yeah. That's one thing. But to take a baby and abort it because you think it's your right and then to donate that fetus for money and for science. That's a big that this kind of dips into like a philosophy thing, but like they're not. When does conscious, when does consciousness happen? So like, and if, if it's not then, then like, they don't have the right because they're not existing yet they're still developing and if you're the woman pr producing that baby then you have the ultimate say of like okay this is going to happen once it's out yeah. Sorry, it's a billion dollar industry. Yeah, it's kind of it's Planned Parenthood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the new abortion laws for like heartbeat laws that they've been put in place. After once have a heartbeat, you can't get an abortion. Like they already have these laws in like Europe, restrictive right. laws. Like they already have all of this stuff. This is not in like Poland. Even then, the... <laughs> yeah, Hungary too probably. Something they realize that this is evil. What they're doing, yeah. you know, as far as abortion up until nine months, it's crazy. My daughter was born premature. She was seven. She was almost eight months. Just under eight months. When you love America, there's a tendency to associate it with freedom and liberty. Mm -hmm. I know that's very attractive to me. What do you say when someone says that I live in a free country, you shouldn't be able to encroach on my ability to do that? Where does Where is there a limit on our liberty? Yeah, that's always a, it's always a fine line between it. It's like when it comes to your Second Amendment rights, you know, to have a gun. Um, it, it used to be everybody could have a gun, but now it's like if you're a felon and you're robbing people, now we take that right away from right, you. Right. So, I mean, there's always um, a fine line when it comes to your rights. Yeah, I think you have to earn those privileges. I mean, you're born with those privileges, but if, if you're making bad decisions, I mean, some of these rights should be taken away from people. Yeah, like, right. if you're a murderer or you're a rapist, you shouldn't be able to vote. And that's a conflict of interest for women, you know? <laughs> or if yeah. you're robbing people, you've shot and killed somebody, you get out of prison, you did your time. I don't think you should have the right to own a gun because you've already proven to us yeah, that right. you have a tendency to overreact or just do horrible things. So, I mean, I wish uh, you could stand by the Constitution. It's black and white. Everybody should have a gun. Everybody should do this. But, you know, some people are evil. Some people mm -hmm. are dangerous. Some people shouldn't have these certain rights, mm -hmm. you know. I, I think the answer to your question is, um, I mean, so long as your rights don't trump another person's rights is a good guideline to live by, mm -hmm. you know. So earlier we kind of agreed that liberal... kind of agree with them there. We, we agree on some things, but... Others, it's like, uh. I ponder this question, and I'm curious what you guys' thoughts are on women's right to vote. We're talking about voting now. Oh, my God, here we're we go. We're looking at the world post breaking up the family, splitting the vote, essentially, mm -hmm. and giving women a... I was thinking about ending it right here, but we're getting into some... Fuck, do I just want to watch the whole thing, then? I think we're going to watch at least another 20 minutes, and then we'll go from there. But on a side note... I already know, uh, I kind of have an idea what Elliot's going to say, but I can tell you right now, he does not think women should vote. I think <laughs> he's too much of a pussy to say it, but he essentially implies it by saying like, well, look at all the problems that have happened because women vote now ever since the the women's movement or some shit like that. Um, ever since women's suffrage, look at all the problems that America is going through now, like Maybe uh, maybe men should be like the ones, since men are the in charge of the household, maybe women should fall in line with that. That's essentially what he's saying, but he's essentially saying, no, I don't think women should vote. So, let's see. I The Hodge twins, I have hope that they're going to disagree and push back, but let's see. Let's see where this goes. The right to vote. Would you, would, you, would you agree with me that if women didn't vote, we wouldn't be where we are right now? Um, a lot of people, um, a lot of women, especially when it comes to pro-choice, right. it's, it's women voting for that. Right. They have been, um, they're the major pur purveyors of that, of that uh, pro-choice. They are the ones, I never understand why women would march up and down the street to kill their own kids. Right. You know? Yeah, um, when it comes to women voting, I think they should have the right to vote. Mm -hmm. It's just that ignorance hurts whether you're a man or a woman. Right. There's a lot of ignorance when it comes to women about certain issues, mm -hmm. and politicians take advantage of them, and it, it right. ruins society for everyone. But you can find that same ignorance in a man. You know what I mean? 
there's ignorant ass men out there that that's this, they think the same way as women. So I think they both should be able to vote. It's just that ignorance. It hurts the male voter, it hurts the female voter, and it hurts society altogether. That's what Socrates, yep. I was reading about him. He said not everybody should be able to vote, whether you're a man or a woman. You should meet certain levels as far as... Fuck Socrates, though. <laughs> he was a fucking... He owned slaves, didn't he? Or something. And all he did was sit on his ass and think. Fuck that bitch. The education you have to the logic competency before yeah. you can vote right. for men and women because idiots will eventually ruin your society. Right. Yeah, that's why so, we have the Electoral College. Right. Yeah. That's the main reason why we have because if you take away the Electoral College, the idiots would ruin our country. Right. Yeah. You would have LA, Chicago, New York City, San Francisco decide all our elections. Yeah. And that's what the Democrats have in their favor. There's always going to be more ignorant people than there are people that's got it together. You know what I mean? You always, because it takes more energy to not be ignorant. Yeah. It's real easy to just cut on your TV and listen to CNN and just like, oh man, that's that's wrong and just believe that. Yeah. It's just being ignorant. It takes a lot of energy to think, to think and learn what exactly is going on and see it from both sides. There, so the Democrats will always have that in their favor. Yeah, but they also have. That's true. Um, I think generally people, yeah, you could say they're. This gets into like what you think human nature is. I personally think there's good in people, but also people are very self interested and stupid and lazy. <laughs> uh, and you would think like oh i like hate people but no i do enjoy meeting new people and i i do love seeing people like out and about um just don't talk to me <laughs> um so but in saying that i know people yes while being lazy and stupid they are um they're consumed by their daily lives now i don't want to say they're self-absorbed yeah some people are but people have so many things on their mind, bills to pay, kids to watch, things to do, school school assignments to turn in. So people are like so wrapped up in their own lives and their own families and stuff like that, that they don't really have time to like, hey, what's happening in politics today? Or hey, what's happening in the world? So you can excuse the ignorance in a way at the same time. You should be trying to learn as much as you can. I, uh, but that's just not the world. That's just not the way the world's set up. So you can't really fault people for that. And even if things were to be like some y utopia where people don't have to work as much and they could like lounge around, there's still going to be people like, oh, I don't know what's happening. I don't know. It's kind of what I think. <laughs> have the intellectual class mm -hmm. they own the universities they own the media mm -hmm. and so it's a kind of a mix in a way between yeah. ignorance and they try to pin us as what they call deplorables yeah ignorance but also hyper intellectualization of everything yeah. such that we live in a friggin make-believe world yeah but right. they're the elites actually right. they're the elites and they just the intellectual elites compared to the fucking billionaires and millionaires okay dude putting out that propaganda for all the regular joes yeah. And the regular Joes look up at them like, oh, man, they're educated. They do this, they do that. So they just believe them. It's their authority fallacy. They just believe them because they're an authority figure. Yeah. So, I mean, Democrats, man, it's, um, they're just better politicians. They're just better politicians. They're just smarter. They just, I don't know what it is, but the elites, they're all on the left, and they control the population yeah. with their uh, propaganda. So what, what do you guys think? I have some opinions about what would get us. Listen, progress is just taking us over a cliff. I don't think it's a matter of moving forward. Mm -hmm. If we're going to restore, it's a matter, that's why you even use the word conservative, right? You have mm -hmm. to have something to conserve, hold on to. Right. What are you guys' thoughts on what are some things that will bring us back to order and stability in the culture? I think, actually, when Biden became president, it opened up a lot of people's eyes um, just to see how the, the, the um, direction the country's going. You know, like, inflation's a huge problem, but they still spending money like it's no tomorrow. You know, so I think it's going to be a red wave in the midterms when it comes to the Congress. Right. And uh, I think we're going to take the White House back. That's that's what I think is going to happen. Um. Oh, yeah, this was before the midterms. Yep. Sorry, dude. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys, nobody knows the future. I like to think about it. Uh, that financial collapse, like the dollar will dissolve yeah. in our lifetime? It eventually will. Yeah. All currencies have. Yeah. yeah. Every last one of them. I think crypto, um, cryptocurrency. I think some form of cryptocurrency is going to take over. Yeah. Do you think that that? Okay. That well, that that's not going to happen. I'm convinced that fatherhood, not just family, but fatherhood, is a linchpin. It's been pulled out, mm -hmm. and so that's why we are where we are. But um, but the return to patriarchy, the return to patriarchs, strong men in the families, mm -hmm. is a means by which we'll uh, return to a traditional 
culture. Would you guys agree yeah. with that? Yeah. 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 You look at every family, you look at society, you look at the men, mm-hmm. those societies, if the men. Okay. So I feel like they're going to just go into like talks about family. Yeah. I think they're going to talk about fatherhood from now on. I'll leave off there or watch it on my own. But yeah, um, it was a decent conversation. Before I even leave, let's see what they said about the midterms. Actually, I have their channel log- loaded up already. Hypocrites. Ah, it's frustrating, bro, because like they their takes are really oh god, it's frustrating. It's very frustrating. Like, how much of this do they actually believe? They're so entrenched in like the culture war. How much of it is like their actual beliefs and their actual well? We just gotta tell the Republican line here. Okay, let's see. Yeah, I got a new show for y'all. This dude want a center seat wearing a hoodie and jeans and looking batshit crazy. <laughs> All right, so there was no red wave. I mean, we was, it was a red trickle. So it turned out that was actually fake news. <laughs> what, the red wave shit? That was fake news. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a red wave. It's more like a red Man, premature was... ejaculation. That's what it was. <laughs> That big red fellow says, rock hard. <laughs> they, when it comes to uh, time for the election. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, get serious on this. I'm going to tell you why there was no red. If there was going to be a red wave, it should have been this election. I mean, it was Cri- easy. Crime is up, inflation. Yeah, people's rights. Oh, my God. Oh, DeSantis Island? What does it say? It was taken away. Uh, vaccine mandate. People lost their jobs because yeah. of Democrats. If there was ever going to be a... Oh, DeSantis Island. Okay, I got scared. I thought that was... Something about Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah, there's gonna be a red wave. I hate those types of shirts. It should have been now. I mean, you shouldn't. If y'all, if y'all want this country to go to shit, I'm telling you, black people and women, <laughs> they're gonna ruin this great country. <laughs> they, I'm telling you, cause they got that emotional edge on the, on that demo of people. Yeah, yeah. So if y'all want a red wave, y'all want this country to keep going in the right direction, mm-hmm. y'all gonna have to make a consolation when it comes to this abortion issue. It shouldn't even be an issue at this point. I, I, I agree with what the Supreme Court did, but now it should be at the state level. But it universally, should there should be rights for women to have an abortion, even though we disagree with it. Yeah. Just Even always we disagree yeah. with it. Because young kids went out, like young women, yeah. they, they, look, they're being indoctrinated in high school, colleges. You're not yeah. going to change that. Democrats yeah. have a, a, a strong hold on the educational system in this country. Yeah. You see it on TikTok with all these crazy-ass teachers. These kids are already being brainwashed at a young age. So y'all, y'all need to make a consolation. Y'all need to come out and say, look, abortion's not banned up until eight weeks. Uh, uh, however many weeks. Mm. You're going to have to do that. Or this is going to be an issue every election. Yep. And you're gonna lose votes every election. And we're gonna lose this country, and then this place is gonna turn into shithole. Where else are we gonna run? Yeah. I mean, it's not like the. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going back to Africa. <laughs> oh my God. I ain't from Africa. It's a joke. Okay. Um, essentially what I got. I'll keep tabs on the Hodge twins now. <laughs> I really hate it when people bring up Mark Twain. <laughs> if voting made any difference, they wouldn't let us do it. Oh. I don't know. Okay, well, I think I will leave off here. Um, Yeah, I'll finish this interview by myself. Okay, well, yeah, that's it for now. Um, Thanks for watching.